Straight ahead on Health Pulse, you're looking at the new and improved neuroscience critical care unit at the University of Utah. What sets it apart from any other medical unit in the Intermountain West? And the city of Sandy is reaching across the border to help people in need. And they answered back in a big way with this ambulance and so much more. Plus, hope for tomorrow. A school program teaching teenagers about mental health. The lessons they're learning early to save them heartbreak down the road. Next on Health Pulse. Hello and welcome to Health Pulse, a TV show dedicated to helping you live a happy and healthy life. I'm Buddy Blankenfeld. And I'm Brandi Vega. Each year, 1.4 million Americans will suffer a traumatic brain injury. 50,000 of those people will die, and more than 235,000 will be hospitalized. Here in Utah, treatment for these patients is now even better, thanks to the newly renovated Neuroscience Critical Care Unit at the University of Utah. Not only does the NCC unit offer the latest and greatest technology, but it's the only unit in the Intermountain West. We're a specialized unit in the brain itself, as well as spinal cord. We often need most of the equipment around the head, um, and then traditional beds aren't set up that way. Dr. Elaine Scalabrin is the medical director of the Neurocritical Care Unit. She says with the help of these specialty booms, they are able to move 360 degrees around the patient's bed. The device also enables doctors to put more equipment in the room, allowing the space in front of the head to be free for access. Occasionally we need to do emergent surgery right here in the room, and that allows us to do that um, without having to remove things. That's, that's a very big deal in terms of convenience and as well as time. Another major first for the NCC units are these new beds. They are for family members who wish to stay by the side of their loved ones. Typical ICUs would never allow this, but the university wants the family members to play a bigger role in the road to recovery. The unit has a waiting room and an education room to help family members understand the injuries their loved one has suffered. Bruce Garrett, the former manager of the NCC unit, says the opening will set a new standard in the level of care. It's a very emotional day. Actually, I didn't think it would be, uh, but it's a very, very emotional day. And um, I think this unit sets a precedent for other ICUs. The new and improved neurocritical care units now have 23 beds, a large community waiting room filled with computers, and a library. Doctors at Ohio State University Medical Center have completed a rare procedure. It happens only about a dozen times a year in the U.S. and is only performed on babies who are in medical danger during birth. This is little Janiah Campbell. While in the womb, she developed a dangerous mass on her neck. So before Janiah was ever fully born, she underwent a rare procedure just to make sure she was safe. Dr. Richard O'Shaughnessy delivered Janiah about halfway and stopped. Then doctors put a small tube down her throat to make sure Janiah could breathe on her own. All of this was possible because her umbilical cord was still attached, which not only provided the baby with oxygen, but medicine. We were afraid that it would be dangerous to the baby to cut that umbilical cord or to cut the lifeline, uh, the baby's attachment to its mother, before we were sure that the baby was going to be able to breathe on its own. Only when it was clear that she could breathe on her own did doctors cut the cord and later drain the mass. Today, Janiah is home, and in a few weeks, Janiah will go back in to get more of the mass removed. And in a few years, she may have to undergo another procedure to remove the last of it. The procedure she had during birth is called EXIT, which stands for Ex Utero Intrapartum Treatment. If you're watching TV with a child right now, you may want to rethink how safe your child is in front of that television set. A new study conducted by the journal Clinical Pediatrics found the number of kids injured by tipping furniture has increased more than 40%. Between 1990 and 2007, more than 260,000 kids wound up in the ER and more than 300 were killed by falling furniture. Unfortunately, a 40-pound TV fell on top of three-year-old Michael. The accident fractured his skull in two places and temporarily paralyzed one side of his face. I think the, the part that, that scared her the most was blood coming out of one ear and then, you know, just, I don't know if I can describe what it's like, but to see one side of his face not moving. 
Dr. Gary Smith of Nationwide Children's Hospital says TV sets have gotten much bigger over the years and many older models are front heavy, making them easier to tip. Securing larger pieces of furniture to the wall with straps or brackets is crucial to keeping children safe. When it comes to tracking the spread of diseases like the flu, one of the most powerful weapons on earth is out of this world. Dr. Larry Schlesinger started and runs a center dedicated solely to finding and fighting these bugs. From their laboratories at Ohio State University Medical Center, over 50 scientists worked on treatments for the next major outbreak. Using remarkable computer programs, another group of scientists can map cases overnight and even zoom into street level to tell who is infected. I can tell you where it came from in the world and what mutations are specific to that lineage such that it can be diagnosed rapidly. But diagnosing the disease is only half the battle. Scientists have to kill what causes it. The problem is many infectious diseases have evolved and are now resistant to our drugs, which is why this team is constantly looking for new therapies. OnStar can do more than just unlock your car. A new two-year study of automobile accidents found automatic crash notification systems can improve patient outcomes. The technology transmits exact locations and the characteristics of the crash from the vehicle to emergency personnel. This crucial information helps rescue crews administer the right type of aid at the scene and provide the trauma center with valuable information. The system can also help determine if the occupants need to go to a level one trauma center or if they can get the right care at a typical emergency room. In the last four years, over seven million GM cars have been built with this new technology. And since 1996, OnStar has responded to over 100,000 crashes. Still ahead on Health Pulse, have you let your style go? Not to worry, Makeover Mom is here. How you can pump up your style. Plus, do you love to get out and walk? There's a new game to help you have fun while you exercise. And the Utah City, which is helping people boost their health with an interactive game, next on Health Pulse. It's time now for Mindbender. Who was the first person to suggest using contact lenses to improve vision? The answer is next.